I'm not too sure if it's a good afternoon or good evening, so good afternoon and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and since I have only 18 minutes, I'm going to plunge into what I have to say without wasting too much time. I'm sure there are people in the wings who are saying, 16, 15, well, I'm going to beat them to it. Uh, it says over there that uh, I'm an author, an actor, a director, and poet. Uh, they've left out a lot of stuff, but that's all right. <laughs> Maybe they just don't know about it. But uh, two things I'm going to talk about. Not many people know that I was also an insurance underwriter. And uh, above all, uh, one of the joys of living in, in Bengal, being born and brought up here and uh, living here, is that uh, I also have the qualification of being a rather special non-Bengali. Uh, all of you are familiar with that term. and. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself over here. Uh, what is a myself? I ask myself every day. Um, when we are young, we are, we are so many things to so many people. Like, I'm actually not one son, I am two sons. I'm a son to my father, I'm a son to my mother. My relationship with my father is very different from my relationship with my mother. I'm a Bhatija. I break out into Hindi and Bangla occasionally. I am into, uh, I, I, I'm a Bhatija, I'm a Bhanja, uh, I'm a Pistuto Bhai, a Mastuto Bhai, I'm a Shala, I'm a Bhashur, I'm a Mejda, Chotda, Borda, I'm a Mama, Chacha, Jatha, and never forget, as I said earlier, a non Bengali, all of these. <laughs> Which reminds me really of, uh, I had another friend when I was very young, and uh, he was also uh, belonged to the same category of non-Bengali that I did. And he came home one day uh, talking about, you know how it is where you, you, you mention, you sing little ditties, and he came home singing, Bhut Amar Poot, Petni Amar Ji, Bukhe Achi Ram Lokkhan, Korbe Amar Ki. Right. So of course his parents, being non-Bengalis, didn't have a clue of what he was saying. And they said, what are you saying? And he said, well, I don't know. I mean, this is, you know, we do eeny, meeny, minor, mo. It's like that in Bangla. That's, that, that's what we're saying. Yeah. They were very worried about this. So they got him a Bengali tutor who, who essentially they wanted to know what the hell the, the, the son was saying. Not really to teach him Bangla, but. And so the first thing they asked him when he came in was, uh, recite this. What does it mean? So the Bangla teacher thought about it and said, uh, uh, it means, uh, Bhut is your Put, Petni is your Ji. In your book is Ram Lokkan, what you can do to me? <laughs> so the parents were just as confused as they were before, and they said, anyway, maybe he'd learn some Bangla uh, at the end of all this. And a uh, few days later, the mother's walking past the room, and she says, she hears the tutor saying, uh, uh, this is Mulo. Mulo, you know, all know what Mulo is. This is Mulo. Mulo means carrot. She was really upset. She says, surely not. So she looked down her aquiline nose at the Bengali tutor and said, surely you mean radish? And he says, yes, madam, sometimes radish, sometimes whitish. Mulo means carrot. <laughs> so that was the end of his Bengali tuition and his uh, attempting to uh, be a Bengali. And pretty much, I used to attend these uh, tuition classes occasionally, and that was the end of my also uh, trying to be anything but a non-Bengali. Um, as then, um, the wisdom of fathers, what can I tell you? I was packed off to, to England to, to study, you would think exciting things, but uh, to study insurance and be an <laughs> insurance underwriter. And let me tell you, uh, being an insurance writer, is not one of the uh, most exciting uh, professions in the world. You know, you have to write, actually write in those days, you typed it after you'd finished writing it. I guess I am that old. And, uh, but it was easily the world's most boring job. I apologize to all the insurance people in the world, but I don't know how they do it. But I was getting only eight pounds a week in those days. In the 60s, I couldn't pay my rent with that, and I couldn't live with that. And I used to live in a hall of residence run by, I think it was the Church of England, I forget now. And uh, 
the warden was a priest, and he said, why don't you walk down to the fort shop on the right and tell them I sent you, and they'll give you a job over weekends. You can subsidize your, um, <laughs> uh, your living here. And I went down there, and uh, it happened to be an undertaker's. So I think I was the first Indian undertaker in England in 1968. And uh, I'll tell you something, it was far more exciting than being an underwriter in, in insurance policy. And uh, I think I had a normally doleful countenance which fitted very well with everybody in the funeral parlor. And they sort of uh, uh, took to me rather kindly and well. And, I made more money over weekends than I made in the whole week. And uh, the tips were terrific. What can I tell you? I used to be extra kind to people. I used to walk them to their chairs and, you know, always had a handkerchief which I would hand. It was fresh on a tray there. Handkerchiefs are very important. I, uh, tissues really are useless. I, I think handkerchiefs can really make you friends. And. Uh, but I had suddenly could afford to do things I couldn't do before that. So for the next year, actually, no, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. I tend to jump the gun a bit. Uh, I was walking, I was going to the West End, and I was walking past the theater, and a gentleman who walked out of the theater and said, do you want to see a play? And I said, yeah, but, and it was a pound, eight pound ticket. That's my weekly salary. But I could afford it. And he said, don't worry, though. It's only four pounds because it's a discount ticket. It's a matinee ticket. And I walked in, and my life changed. The play was Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead, written by Tom Stoppard, one of the classic writers of the 20th century and the 21st century, I might add. And the play, as I said, was Rosen Gill Are Dead. And I had never seen a professionally produced play before in my life. And there it was in front of me, a world opening up, not just the world of theater, but the Renaissance world, you know, the world of discovery, the world of science, things were happening around the time Shakespeare was writing Hamlet and Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are two sidebars in, in Hamlet. Um, and I walked out there a completely changed man. And one of the lines in that play made a tremendous impact on me. The first one, two of the lines, the first one really was, uh, it, it went something like, look on every exit as being an entrance somewhere else. And that line, <laughs> I took that line and I, I watched theater for the whole year and then I knew at the end of that I could never be, go to university. I was never uh, educated or I did not have the brains or the erudition to belong to one of the major universities in England and I made up my mind then to come back. Of course I would be labeled a failure when I came back not having achieved anything. I didn't care. I came back to India through the door that was offered to me, the exit door, thanks to my, again to my father who said, what's the problem? Come home. And I came here and I joined university. And for three years, I worked like a dog to get that completely useless piece of paper, that degree, uh, because it was really was useless, but the three, it didn't help me get a job anywhere, but the three years that I worked to get it were the three most valuable years of my life. Because those three years opened even more doors to me and for me. And uh, I read books and I read plays and I did plays, uh, very badly ones, within the college campus. And it was while walking out of the college campus one day that I walked into a an audition to pick up a friend of mine who was auditioning for a play, and I was standing, I think it was in St. Xavier's uh, in, in those days, and um, I was hanging around outside uh, the, the audition room, and this lady walked past and said, why are you here, why don't you come in? So I said, oh, all right, so I sat down, and uh, she was the director of the play, and uh, they were auditioning, and she asked me whether I'd like to read, and I said, no, not particularly, and uh, but my parents wouldn't approve. She said, what's your parents got to do with it? <laughs> There's no guarantee I'm going to give you a role in the play. Uh, so your parents won't even know. Why don't you just read? So I read. And uh, she offered me a lead role in that play, uh, written by a gentleman called Mr. Shakespeare. And the play was Hamlet. And I was Hamlet. And it was, again, a, a, a door that had been opened 
by this lady for me. Because when I walked into actually doing what then was semi-professional theater, I knew what the world had in wait for me. I was going to be an actor, and I was going to be the opposite of all you people. And that's another line from Tom Stoppard's play. He says, we are actors, the player king. We are actors. We are the opposite of people. So I was going to do off stage. I was going to do on stage now what all of us do off stage. And I had a brilliant and marvelous time doing that. I moved from uh, theater, which opened doors to television, which opened doors to cinema, which opened doors to music, art, uh, different time, types of uh, culture, different types of uh, uh, literature, different types of folk art. And it was the most exciting period in my life. Again, I keep having these exciting except for the insurance bit, uh, periods in my life. And then, and then another door opened. Uh, I had to follow my heart through that door. And it's nothing emotional or anything like that. I, I had a heart attack. So I wasn't allowed to work for about four or five months. And uh, well, I had to do something, so I started writing. I wrote a short story, somebody read it, somebody told the publisher, the publisher phoned me and said, would you like to have 10 more such short stories? I said, no, but how long have you got? And he said, take your time. And six months later, I'd sent him 11 short stories and he published them. And lo and behold, I, I was a writer. <laughs> so I wrote another book of short stories, which, uh, which was different. It was a composite short story. The thing about what I'm trying to tell you is that if we actually decide that this is what I'm going to do, but I'm going to keep my mind open and I'm going to keep doors open, or oh, I'm going to look at doors at any rate, and given half an opportunity, I'm going to walk through that door. Let me tell you, you will find two things on the other side of that door. You'll either find the best time of your life, or you'll find the worst time of your life. You might even find death behind that door. I don't know. But my God, you have to take that chance. You have to walk through that door. There's a film director called Wonkar Wai. Uh, he, he made Chunking Express and a, another film called 2012 and a whole lot of other films. In 2012, there's an apocryphal story, really. I'm not too sure if it's true. But it's said to be true, and he, he tells the director, why don't, he tells the actor, listen, um, um, you do this bit and then you walk out through that door. And the actor says, but why should I? It doesn't say that in the script. He said, just do it, because I want you to do it. He said, no, but I'm a method actor. I want to know what's behind that door. And the director says, you know, I don't really know. I haven't written it yet. But why don't you just walk through it? Let's see what happens. And the expression on the actor's face, I've seen that scene. It's, he's, he's bewildered, he's, he's lost, and very hesitantly he opens that door. Of course, it cuts right there because we all know what's behind that door. It's just another set. But the point of this story is that both the actor, Wong Kar Wai, and all of us need to take that, that walk through that door. And that's how I've been able to do all the things I've been able to. I've never let a door stop me from anything. A door is meant to be opened. A door is meant to be walked through. If we want to be anything other than boring. I'm not saying that, that, that being a chartered accountant is boring. Or I've met some of the most creative chartered accountants in the world. The things they do with my figures, whoa. Uh, <laughs> and, and I, I, I've just met a fantastic uh, lawyer down here and you know, so not, not, nothing is boring, but it's, it's what you make of it. And if you keep your mind open, you can be 101 other things as well. And so one day when I was invited to, uh, to a Kavi Samelan, uh, well, I call it a Kavi Samelan. It was more of sort of poet, poetry corner and a cafe. And uh, there were a whole lot of people reading out their poetry. And I was, somebody said, why don't you say a few words? Uh, being a senior citizen, I'm called everywhere to say a few words. They don't want me to do anything else. Come say a few words. So, which is what I did. I stood up to say a few words, and I thought to myself, why not try? I've never written a poem in my life. Why not try to 
improvise something. And there were a whole lot of people in the cafe talking on their cell phones or sending each other messages or something. So I just took two or three phones, brought them up to me, and they were rather shocked and surprised. And I said, listen to this. I've never written a poem in my life, but here it is. I hope you people understand a little bit of Hindustani. And it said, Aap hum wo hum sab cell phone uthate hain, aap SMS bhejte hain, aap unhe phone karte hain, aap unhe WhatsApp bhejte hain. Aur iski saath hum tasweer zarur lete hain, aap ki, meri aur sab ki, aur Facebook pe paste karte hi hain. Chaar paanch hazaar milenge aap ko aise daily. Angrezi mein likhte hain, I took a selfie. और हिंदी में लिखते हैं मैंने खुद की ले ली एंड ऑफ कोर्स दिस इज एग्जैक्टली द रिएक्शन दैट दे हैड दे बर्स्ट ऑफ लाफिंग एंड 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 दे क्लैप्ड एंड दे सेड वन मोर एंड जस्ट दैट मॉर्निंग आई रेड अबाउट अ रायट हैड टेकन प्लेस समवेयर सेंसलेस communal riot and uh, and that came really from the heart it it was something that uh, that mattered to me and so i don't wish to tread on any religious toes here but it went something like this uh, i could really hate a muslim <gasps> i heard this gossip in the audience i could really hate a muslim or a hindu or two or even a christian or a parsi or jew and without sounding rude or even profane i could actively dislike a sikh or a jain i find most religions are by and large deceitful but but i have to confess i really love people and i got the silence that day too because i think I think when you walk through a door, you have to take a risk. And I took that risk, and I played with with this poem. And uh, I think people liked it because uh, six months later, guess what? There was a book of poetry out in the market written by yours truly. So there must be some benefit, some value in walking through a door that has been pointed out to you. And all I can say is that. I wish I could say it in verse again, but uh, all I can say is that, for God's sake, walk through doors. There are two kinds of doors. One which tell you, no, you can't walk past. And the other, which says, come in, come in, come in. There's something here behind this door for you.